Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, Banjo's eligibility for Smash confirmed with an indifferent shrug. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. We've got a good show for you today. We are going to be talking about the news from the week, including Super Mario Odyssey losing out to Just Dance 2018 at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. And then on Thursday, we are coming back to finally have our re- review discussion on Kirby Star Allies. Uh, so come back for that. But for now, and for this right here, Mark, how are you? I'm doing great. Isn't it difficult to say just dance 2018 without like accentuating the just dance part uh tell what do you mean well so it's difficult to just say uh the just title dance of the game, 2018 just dance 2018 right you always want to be like just dance 2018 mm, there's I a see. certain like um je ne sais quoi to it see i've got a i've got a thing that i started doing on purpose and now it just happens where i will emphasize the wrong word uh in like the title of a tv show oh so like the nicholas cage school of acting a little bit yeah i will say game of thrones when people largely accept it as game of thrones right Uh uh-huh uh and this is just this is just something that i do now i have little to no control over it uh and i think just dance just dance just dance 2018 i don't know i don't know where i would want to put the emphasis that reminds me a little bit of my friend who uh was started being really grumpy about everything as a bit and then that just became who he was i think we know a lot of comedians like that yeah so you know don't make that face because it might stick that way that's that's a real thing uh mark here's a here's another thing here's a real thing uh we would like to be eligible to go to e3 as uh, a little press podcast, right? Mm-hmm. This is what they're called, press podcasts. Uh-huh. Uh, but we, we know all the official lingo. Mm-hmm. We need 50 reviews on Apple Podcasts. We do not have 50 reviews on Apple We're Podcasts. We're about halfway there. About halfway there. So if you can help us get a little bit closer, uh, you can. You can do this. Uh, please go rate, review, subscribe. I guess the subscription isn't part of this. We would like that, but just rate and review. That's the part that we need to work on right now. And thank you to uh, Janice Orion and M Barnett 000 for leaving five star reviews recently. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the reviews. Also, we got a three star review not that long ago. Um, and thanks for that one, too. Yeah. Uh, maybe the news that we're not doing guest weather. We'll turn that three star to a five star. They didn't leave any notes, so I don't know if that's what bothered them. Oh, so now we're just trying, you're just trying to get out in front of what you think they might not have liked about the show? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is news. We're not doing guest weather. We're also not doing our weather. Is it warm? Is it cold? No one knows. We'll never talk You'll about never it ever know. again. Um, but so in lieu of that, you should follow us on Twitter. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. And all that good stuff. The Facebook page just remains Nintendo Cartridge Society. So if you're not worried about Cambridge Analytica or whatever it's called, that's right, getting information about you, go ahead and follow us there. Not that we're giving our information mm-hmm. specifically to Cambridge Analytica. Also, jokes on you, Cambridge Analytica has all of your information and has already. They made know a ton you're Nintendo fans. It. They're sending those pro-Trump Nintendo memes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. directly to you. That's right. Are they, are, are, those are all Wario heavy, right? Ah. Uh, I yeah yeah probably no baby peach oh what a monster baby peach is uh if you would like to not engage with any of that whatsoever but would like to borrow my copy of sonic forces you can still maybe the game has still not come back to me you can still maybe borrow my copy of sonic forces all you need to do is uh send your physical mailing address to nintendo cartridge society at gmail.com and we send the game right to you and uh, you know we hope it comes back someday but it might not who knows nobody knows oh sorry one last thing yes if you Mm. want us to do guest weather leave (laughs) us a five-star review on apple Podcasts and put where you want the guest weather to be for it doesn't have to be where you live right or any place even a place you visited now i know what you're thinking you're thinking 
Patrick and Mark, did you just get tired of picking places to do guest weather for? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But if you want us to do it badly enough and do the work yourself, then we will do it. No problem. Uh, the other thing that you can do by sending us an email is you can contribute to our Game Boy Classic Edition conversation. Uh, we want to know what 15 games from the original Game Boy or Game Boy Color that you would put on a Game Boy Classic. Up to 15. Up if to you 15. have one that you're just like, this has to be in here, send mm-hmm. it to us. You don't need a complete list of 15. I had a Game Boy Advance in my car in Chicago that just had a uh, Tetris Advance in it. I can confirm that you had that also while you were in L.A. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just, that's like where, that's where it was born. That's where it came about. Oh, I see. And it was just a Tetris machine. That's it. That's all it was there for. I have since put other games into it, but for a long time, it only played Tetris. I just don't want people to feel like they have to send us 15 titles with one that they actually care about and 14 fillers. Right. Uh, so we we did get uh we've gotten a list already from Dustin in Houston. Thank you, Dustin. We will use that list when we get to the conversation. But uh, he writes a nice little note, and so I thought I would read it here. Um, he says, "I got my kid a switch for Christmas after hearing you guys gush about it, and it truly is amazing. Great call, you guys." Side note: owning a video game system as an adult with disposable income is way better than being a kid who is reliant on birthday and Christmas presents for new games. Anyways, love this show. Look forward to it every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah, thanks, Dustin. Um, I concur. Uh, I had that moment over the weekend where I was like, should I throw a bunch of uh money at the Wii Virtual Console? I ended up not doing it, but I could have. I could have thrown a hundred bucks at it and been like. That's a hundred bucks. I shouldn't spend it, but I could. Yeah, that's what I call the uh, Reese's peanut butter cup problem. Tell me. Well, when you're a child, <laughs> you're like, oh man, when I have candy, when I have money, I'm gonna buy like all the candy I ever want. Right. And when, as when you're an adult, you're like, oh, I can buy these Reese's peanut butter cups, but I shall buy tomatoes instead. That's right. And uh, if you do buy the peanut butter cups, you will eat them all, and. Feel terrible. Mm-hmm. Mark, let's get into what we've been playing this week. So our review discussion of Kirby Star Allies will be on Thursday. So obviously we have been playing, we continue to play that game. Um, I had friends in town over the weekend, uh, including uh, my friend John, who, as it turns out, is a big Kirby guy. Loves kirby um he saw the super nes classic on my shelf and was like let's play what's the name of that game superstar yeah kirby super maybe we'll say that's it kirby superstar and he was like play this mode with me you can be like the you can be kirby's friend and i'll be kirby uh and i was like oh my god this game is so much like kirby star allies and then we put on kirby star allies and played it for like four or five hours had a great time um, have you been playing it a little bit more? Yeah, I completed the story. I guess we'll, um... We'll talk more about it. Yeah, we'll it, talk yeah. about it on Thursday. Um, another game that I've been playing this week, this weekend, again with John, uh, we turned on Super Mario Brothers 3. Again, the, uh, NES classic. It's a, it's a great thing to, just to, like, have around for when you have video gamey people, uh, like, come into your house and, like, you want to just play something quick. Um, and so we started playing Super Mario Brothers 3 with the caveat of not pushing the B button. Do not push the B button. So we could, do, we could push the B button on the world map, or to, uh, like, you know, the, the stage select, um, or to open a treasure chest in a toad house, because otherwise there's no way to get out of the toad house. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would you go to the toad house in the first place? Here's the thing, is that we made up this exception when I got the warp whistle in World 1-3. Because I, you know, went behind the world there, and then like, there, there I was in a fake toad house to get that warp whistle. So I had to do it. Um, and we we're like, okay, great, no more, no more pushing B within levels, which means no running, no throwing fireballs, no flying, no spinning your little raccoon tail, none of that. Um, and we're playing, we're playing, and we're like, we'll warp or whatever we have to do to like get through this. Um, and first roadblock we hit is in world two dash pyramid where you have to throw like the, the like beetle shell at the things like breakthrough. And I was like, Ugh. okay, here's exception. Number one, like we are, we're going to ma- we're going to make exceptions, um, but it'll be just in this level and it'll be fine for these two individual places where we need to break through. 
fine, did it. Playing, playing, playing. Then again, get to uh, it's one of the water levels. So like deep in World Three, like maybe three eight or three nine. Um, it's the one where uh, like half of it is on land, and then like you go under, like to like you take pipes down into a water part. That's, oh yeah, you, yeah. Do you remember this level? And you have to grab. It's got those like blocks, those blue ones that you can just like grab and throw around. You have to deal with them to get through that part of the game. And so at that point we're like ah, another set of exceptions, and then we stopped playing. <laughs> and well, I think that just shows you have a lot of integrity. <laughs> Thank you. Although we did make one whole set of exceptions before deciding that we would have to compromise our uh, our um, principles too much to keep going. All right, Mark, let's move into what is coming out this week and what we, what we might be playing next week. So tomorrow, Wednesday, March 28th, the Kirby Star Allies is getting an update with some new dream friends, including Ku, Marks, Gooey, Kine, and Rick. I think it, I, I, assume, I assume it's Kine. Oh, sure, yeah. So it's uh, Rick, Kine, and Ku, which are the hamster bird and fish from kirby's adventure 2 kirby's dreamland 2 kirby's dreamland 2 um it was just like a it depending on whether you're flying or swimming or on the ground um and then marks and gooey are from different kirby games as well uh i know this is only coming like two weeks after the game was released but seems like too little too late <laughs> yeah i think i i mean the uh uh man, what are what they called? Like the Dream Dream house? Friends, yeah. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, the no. Dream Palace. Yeah. yeah, the Dream Palace. Uh, I don't get it. <laughs> it's just it's just to get uh a, a specific kind of. It's basically just so you can roll Meta Knight and have like a good sword wielding character. <laughs> that that's basically the only reason to to go to those things. Uh, and then on Thursday, March twenty ninth, Cluster Puck ninety nine, the Charming Empire. Uh, Zombilly, Johnny Turbo's Arcade, Bad Dudes. That's right. It's coming out this week, even though we said it was coming out last week. It's one of those mysterious eShop floating releases. Uh huh. So, will it come out on the 29th? Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, Mark, on this topic, we got an email from Michael Rigi, uh, who writes in and says, Dear Nintendo Cartridge Society, with the popularity of the Nintendo Switch, do you think it's doomed to be filled with shovelware titles like the Wii? Each week we get more and more eShop games and ports. P.S. If you could shout out my Instagram, that would be great. He's more retro games on Instagram. Um, what do you think, Mark? Do you think we're seeing that? Uh, are, are we seeing a dearth of shovelware here? I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with shovelware. I think it shows that your platform uh, has is an attractive like marketplace sure because we saw a ton you see shovelware on every successful platform i remember going into you know you would just walk into a cvs and there would be ds games at the checkout aisle yeah for sure and i mean it's uh yeah i i i think we are going to see a bunch of uh, a bunch of crappy games on on the platform but i also don't necessarily see it as a bad thing because like i it does anyone does anyone go shopping for games by just going like I'll see what's on the eShop. I think maybe if you're like looking for sales or you're in like a specific budget or something. I I think the Yeah, but I, like I think so that makes sense. Like you're you're looking for a sale and there's a sales tab and you go and you check that out. But that seems different from like I have a, a totally clean slate. I just want to buy a game. I don't know what game. I'm just going to go and hope that the universe like provides for me. Yeah. Like I think people are seeking out the kinds of experiences that they want and either like hearing about them on, you know, podcasts or YouTube shows or in a an indie showcase or whatever. So I but I guess this is the same thing that's happening on Steam or App Store or any platform yeah. where you have a ton of games is that good games are going to be buried and good games are not going to be a to be able to find an audience mm -hmm. because nobody knows where to go for them. Curation is a problem on every single platform. Absolutely. And hopefully Nintendo will do more to help, you know, like curate. And they've the also future. stated that they're going to, right? Or that right. they, they are invested in the idea of working on curation. 
And I also think it's it's important to keep in mind that like we are seeing, you know, maybe 15 to 20 games come out a week. Um, that many games come out on Steam like an hour. So like, you know, or the, the app store, it's, it's a constant flow of software. So the Switch isn't there. And I don't think it's ever going to get to that same sort of huge rush of constant games. Definitely. Um, and like, I don't know. I'm, I, I also think we are, we are catching up to um, the indie games that have come out in the last like four or five years. Um, and soon we will, it, there will come a time when all of the relevant uh, indie games have made their way to Switch and then it just populates at the same rate that the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 stores do. And it'll be fine. I don't, I don't think there's any doom and gloom here. I don't think so either. I mean, uh, I think you're right that it'll never be Steam just yeah. because develop, that many like indie developers will, will never have access to the Switch eShop in the right. way that anybody can put a game on Steam. But I do think that there are success stories, obviously, that are happening on Switch and not on Steam, like the developer of Blossom's Tale. Yeah. You know, they sold... Uh, Blossom Tales. Blo- <laughs> I actually thought I got it right that time. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, you know, they also released on Steam and didn't really get any traction there. And on Switch, they sold like 10 times as much and are able to continue to develop games right. because it found a audience on Switch. And so stuff like that, I hope doesn't go away right i mean it's it's so interesting to think that like you know you read off uh you know zombilly we're not going to hear about zombilly next week like that's it that's the end of that story we're not going to be correcting each other on where the s is in the title of that game right um so i i think there there are uh indie games with staying power and i think it's important that they are showing up on this platform and obviously like helping fill in the kind of software gaps that nintendo leaves um, and well, the rest of the third parties are like trying to figure out their role in the system going forward. Um, I'm glad they're there. And then on Friday, the Arcade Archives versus Punch Out is being released. So this is cool. You and I have both talked about not really being Punch Out guys, um, but the versus Punch Out, like the arcade version of Punch Out, is cool and has that like green wireframe and it's like that vertically oriented. I don't know. That's. I'm I'm tempted by this one. It it is cool, and I'm. This is only the second Nintendo like versus arcade archive that we've seen, right? Third, because uh, there's Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers have have both come out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot because Super Mario Brothers remains like towards the top of the yeah that's right. list, and because people want to play Super Brothers. Mario Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Virtual Console, where are you at? Where are you at? And also on Friday, Farm Expert 2018 for Nintendo Switch is coming out. Uh, the, no, that's not a farm simulator. That's a, that's a farm expert. Is this like a how-to guide? I believe it's a farm simulator. Amateurs need not apply. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, all right. So that's, uh, I don't know, maybe there is a problem. <laughs> all right, Mark, let's move out of this segment. And now it's time for a regular segment on the show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So, for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, you want to talk about whether or not drinking tea is cool. Do you think drinking tea is cool? And by cool, I mean... It's, I don't know. There's something fashionable about going to like a Starbucks. Well, so let's buy. You know, like let's establish that first. Is drinking coffee cool? I think so. I think, I think it has so a certain, too. Like I work as hard as I play, sort of mystique. <laughs> I think the I think coffee drinking has become more universally cool. Like there was a little bit where it was like uh, a status symbol kind of thing. Um, but then it also became like a, a blue collar thing too. And now I think it's just like when anyone is ready to like get down to work or like be serious or whatever, it's like, I just need to have my coffee. Yeah. Right. So I think, and it maybe in that way it's blown past being cool. Right. Um, but is tea cool? Do you have a theory on this? I, how, do, how do you feel personally? Do you feel cool when you drink tea? Well, I prefer tea to coffee. Mm, okay. But 
tea is also just dirty water. So, and so is coffee, but I'm right. Yeah, I guess that's it's, true. It's all just hot, dirty water. I I don't think I think they've tried to make tea cool. Do you remember those Tivana stores? Absolutely. I yeah. think they still exist in a few places, but I think they're they are owned by Starbucks, and I think it was Starbucks's attempt to make tea cool. Mm-hmm. And I think they're all closing because I think tea does not have the social currency that coffee has. Tea is also too obviously different from itself. Like, there are too many different kinds of tea. There are a lot of different kinds of coffee, but, like, people don't really distinguish. Like, they they have, like, grades. They know, like, this coffee is better than this coffee, and this coffee is better than this coffee. But I don't, like, until you get to, like, the really hardcore people, you're not hearing about, like, different kinds of beans or whatever. And, like, really broad scale, tea is different. Green tea is different from black tea is different from white tea is different from oolong tea. Like, that's that's still, like, pretty surface level. And then there are, like, different things within those that you don't have to be an uh, expert like you do with coffee to, like, distinguish one from the other. And you can't really uh, hide the taste of tea with sugar mm, like you can with coffee. Point. Or as effectively. But here's... A, okay, so here's, like, a thought exercise. Okay. All right. Imagine... You know, like a go-getting businesswoman yes. or cre- or creative type. Maybe she's Deborah Messing's character in the NBC TV series Smash. You know, she has a lot of scarves. Or Deborah Messing's character in Will and Grace. Yes. Or her character in Smash, or her, which is not Smash Brothers, mind you. De- the Deborah Messing should be in the next Smash Brothers game. I put it in the book. Uh, we're, of course, violating the... I apologize. <laughs> um... Do you imagine this character drinking coffee or do you imagine this character drinking tea? She's a go-getter. She has to like jump in a cab to make it downtown in time for a meeting. I mean, I think you're right. No, the answer is no. Um, I think we still associate tea with sobriety. Mm. Tea totalers. Oh, yes. Uh, and, and that also conjures images of like old women. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And like effeminate British men. Right. Both of these things are true. Um, but like coffee and booze those are things that we we put together yeah those are good time drinks now here's this is what needs to happen for tea to become cool someone needs to invent some like tea mixed drinks and i'm not talking about a long island iced tea that doesn't count we need a hot tea with booze in it (laughs) and then we're on the way because it's like you can have an irish coffee oh sure yeah right uh, or, like, it, I guess, is that just Kahlua and coffee, or is that uh, whiskey and coffee? I think it's whiskey and coffee. You can put Kahlua and coffee. That's another, like, thing. And, like, Kahlua tastes coffee-y. And, but that's where I think we come back to this idea of, like, it's difficult to gussy up tea with sugar. Yeah. And make it taste, uh, like, ice cream. <laughs> but there are tea ice creams, I guess, just as much as there are coffee ice creams. Yes. Here's another thing is that in the States, we don't do a lot of cream in tea. Right. We don't do milk in tea. But milk and coffee, obviously, all the time. And other places do milk in tea, like a bunch, right? So why why is it that we have this, like, line, this separation here where, like, we can't make this thing into a, like, milkshakey sort of drink? One, maybe it's flavor combinations but two maybe it's because we tossed that tea (gasps) into the sea that's right that's right have forever since kind of turned our back on it that i think i think that's probably right it's the drink of our oppressors (laughs) when i lived in chicago i worked at a coffee and tea place called argo tea i guess i suppose their priorities would be a tea and coffee place um and so i learned a lot about tea and different kinds of tea and how long to steep various tea drinks for and 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 all of that and we made tea lattes and tea uh you know all that stuff and like oh well, wow i guess, I, we'll guess never know. I guess we will never know we were accompanied today by pianist jorgen yaman damen jorgen damen is is how i'm gonna say his name is pronounced all right mark let's move into the news And let's start off the news by posing a question. Mm. Do you want Banjo and Kazooie, or I guess really any other rare characters, showing up in Smash Brothers? Why, Mark, why would you ask me this uh, question? Well, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, is, has said in the past that he would be interested in it. And 
continues to be fine with it. He replied to a fan who posed the question to him on Twitter with, yep. All right. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, would I be interested in this? Of course. Rare is a big part of Nintendo's history, especially in the Nintendo 64 era. Isn't Banjo-Kazooie just Doug, D- Duck Hunt Dog? Mmm, what a great question. Yes. <laughs> but I think there are other rare characters that would also be fun to see uh, in, in another Smash game. I believe in our... F- what was it? I, either our fantasy draft? I think our fantasy draft, yeah. I, I believe I had James Bond on there. You did, yeah. and I didn't veto it. You didn't. You could have used your veto, but you did not. I think I wake up in the middle of the night most nights in a cold sweat saying, why, oh, why didn't I veto James Bond? Regrets. Like I mean, that Ben Fold song. Just like that Ben Fold. Regrets. Oh. Or the perfect dark lady, whatever her name is. Joanna Dark? You're saying that, and I'm not going to veto it, but I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night tonight and say, no! I th- it might be Joanna Dark. I think you might I'm be right. pretty close. Well, but th- that's the thing is like, who else is there? Like Conker? Yeah, I th- Conker or like any of the characters from Diddy Kong Racing, I feel like would be good pulls. Um, it's a little weird, but why not a Killer Instinct character? Oh, sure. That'd be fun. Um, and then, you know, that could be a little bit of just sort of cross promotion for the Killer Instinct game that is maybe still ongoing on Xbox. I don't know. Um, but, uh,. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. I, I'm, I'm just like Phil Spencer. Sure, sure. Let's, let's do it. Let's see him. In last Thursday's actually, episode- hold on, wait. Sorry, to interrupt. I think if any of our listeners have any pitches for rare characters that should be in, uh, Smash, I would love to hear them. Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com. And I don't want to hear any of the pirates from the name of this game. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves doesn't count. Never. How about on- the Kraken te- tentacle? No Kraken tentacles. Um, maybe the no. That's it. Just none of that. None of that. Okay. You know what the you know what the rules are. Has to maybe appear on a Nintendo platform at some point. Yeah, like Connect Sports doesn't count, right? In last Thursday's episode, we talked a little bit about uh, Nintendo's presence at Game Developers Conference 2018, uh, but we didn't really discuss any of the panels they held. One detailed the development of the original Splatoon and showed off early prototypes where players controlled bunnies rather than squid people. Um, This is cool, right? Yeah. I guess we had heard this earlier in like an Iwata Asks. Oh, yeah. uh, Before the original Splatoon release, but we had never seen pictures of it. And you are, of course, not seeing pictures of it right now because this is an audio medium. You don't know what people are doing right now. But you could be looking at pictures. You could be scrolling through Kotaku right now, catching you up wanted on to. news from a week ago. <laughs> uh, so why rabbits? Mm. Apparently, they're highly territorial, and they were thinking of them as, like, there's white rabbits, there's black rabbits, uh, and their neutral colors would contrast re- really well with bright ink colors. Um. Man, the squid squid is such a better choice than that, though. Right. I mean, and so one, like, the initial roadblock they ran into when they were thinking about it was, like, why would rabbits shoot or hide in ink? Yeah. How would they hide in ink? Not just why, but how. So the analogy that uh, the developers used for the creation of the game was that they, they said it was, like, creating a container, uh, then they tossed balls in it to fill it up so like they once they figured out the initial mechanics like the game mechanics Mm -hmm. then they went back and were like oh what can we use to like make this world richer and when individual developers would suggest things like what if they are listening to pop music while like they're battling that helped inform the broader world and mythology yeah, well, and I mean, it, I think it totally pays off because Splatoon feels like the world of Splatoon without having like any real like, you know, strong narrative in it is just a cool world, right? And like, it presents this maybe post-apocalyptic world where like squids evolved into morphing human creatures and then like did something terrible to the Octolings. Like, there's so much implied lore and culture in that game that like it's just fun to exist you know walking around the uh uh what's the the like the the square inkopolis inkopolis yeah um and that was fun in the first game too and it's fun in the second 
uh, and just like existing in that world and like shopping for the clothes and you know there are brands that you see over and over again there are these bands who you know write the different or perform the different songs that are in the game. It all feels very like real and full and rich. It's also something that we've heard about the way Nintendo develop game develops games over and over again, where they figure out the game mechanic first, and then they figure out how Kirby can do that. Right. right. Or like what character fits it best, or if it's going to be a new IP and stuff like that. And it, I feel like that is not as common in game development. Like, oh, interesting. I feel like, especially with big, uh, like single player experiences and things like that. Like I'm thinking of what we've learned about the uh, the canceled Star Wars game from yeah. EA and uh, what is the name of that studio? Visceral. Visceral Studios. It sounds like you know there was a lot of focus on narrative and story and things like that, and then. Uh, less time spent on how is this going to be fun to play right yeah which is i mean that's a tough thing to like negotiate because you know there are narrative based games that are a ton of or that i don't know are are good games you know i i like them naughty dog games um i'll play the next uncharted or last of us you know regardless of what it plays like i'm sure it'll play fine because they're smart at that but like um that's obviously not what they're leading with. They're leading with what the experience, what the narrative experience is. And yeah, it is super cool to see that Nintendo is like, what's fun? And then build everything around what's fun. And that's how you get to a crazy place like Splatoon or like Pikmin. You know, like they don't start with uh, heady sci fi concepts. They're like, uh, here's what's fun. And the heady science fiction will come out of that. And it doesn't always work. Yeah. Like uh, Star Fox Zero is yeah, a good example. Star Fox Zero. And Star Fox Guard is a, a little bit of the, um, the other method that you were describing of like they had a game and didn't have a, a skin to put on it until, you know, years later. And they're like, oh, this can kind of be a Star Fox game. Or I'm sure lots of canceled games we never see like that Project Hammer for Wii. Yeah. Where, you know, the idea was pretty basic. Use the Wiimote to hammer things and they weren't able to never able to really crack that nut got to get that thor license got to get that thor license. got to get that thor license uh speaking of platoon nintendo announced that they will be holding a super smash brothers invitational i'm getting to the splatoon part and mm. the splatoon 2 world championships at e3 this year uh so does that mean we will see super smash brothers being played like super smash brothers for switch yes being played yes so it's going to there nintendo will be inviting a select group of players to compete in the smash brothers tournament and it will in fact be the first uh, exhibition tournament for the switch game so we saw smash for wii u and 3ds also being played at uh, e3 before um the game was actually out it's a cool way to you know see high level players who have been playing with you know mario and pit and link and whatever for a decade plus uh being able to tr- trot out their same moves with slightly slightly altered versions of those characters yeah hopefully somebody plays link yeah oh man i want to see are those bombs blue mark are those that'd bombs be great blue? can the bombs be square i can't wait for the splatoon 2 world championships online qualifiers for the u.s and canadian pl- gamers will be hosted by battlefy starting april 21st uh, there will also be qualifiers in other regions vying for a chance to compete in the World Championships in June. Are you going to go for it? Are you going to try to try to compete? No. <laughs> no, it's too commercial. It, yeah, you know? that's exactly the problem. <laughs> um, man, sometimes I wish I was better at Splatoon. Like, I'm fine at it. Right. But it, it would be cool to be... I also think these are like PD. teams of four. Yes. Right. I wish I had three friends. <laughs> Me as well. Right. Uh, we're halfway there, technically, right? What, because we're two of us? Yes. Yeah. Great. But if we had three friends, maybe like one person could call in sick sometimes. Or one of us could call in sick sometimes. I mean, I think we would need at least five friends so one of us could call in sick sometimes. If there are you and I uh-huh. and we have three friends. Oh, yes. Then there yes, are five of, of course. us. <laughs> of course. Arithmetic. Uh, accessory maker Hori is creating a left Joy-Con with a D-pad, but it will only work in handheld mode. Um, what? So, it lacks all the first-party tech 
that a regular, like a Nintendo Joy-Con has, like HD rumble and gyroscopes, but crucially, it lacks Bluetooth. So you can't oh. play it on a Joy-Con grip. But it can communicate with the Switch when it is slid right into yes, it. Yes, exactly. Um, so if it's like, so it's going for about $25 uh, when you convert the yen to, to American money. To American money. Mm-hmm. One, how much do you care about a D- D-pad or lack of D-pad on a Joy-Con, especially considering you have a Pro Controller? Mm-hmm. And two, are you happy with the D-pad on the Pro Controller? And three, mm. if uh, you are interested in this, is $25, let's say it's 30 is that Gotta too pay much to pay? Shipping. Um, that's very little money as far as like any sort of special controller goes. Um, you know, I've got a a fight stick over there that I spent one hundred and thirty dollars on. So, like, you know, you just have to if you're gonna buy a special controller or something that uh, changes your input in any way, you're gonna spend some money on it. Thirty is basically nothing, uh, as far as that's concerned. But I don't know that I've encountered anything yet where I really need the D-pad, and maybe part of that is because there's no virtual console, um, and so I haven't been like Mario Three doesn't feel right with a um, with an analog stick. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm. This is something that'll probably pass me by. No, oh, the other question: Do I have complaints about the uh, D-pad pro on the Pro Controller? Um, sometimes it it a little too sensitively uh detects the diagonals, but uh, that's it only occasionally. I, I I usually have no complaints about it. Actually, the where I have the had the most complaints with it was while playing Breath of the Wild. Sometimes I would like push the button to, I don't even remember what the D-pad did in that, but like select maybe like the Magnesis powers or like weapons or something. Um, and it just like doing the wrong one, but it also pauses at the same time. So I just like let go and push it again. And then it's right. I do kind of wish I had a better D-pad when I was playing Celeste. Yeah, yeah, you had mentioned that. Because there were some times where, like, the analog stick wasn't really doing it, but the four distinct buttons Mm -hmm. of the left Joy-Con wasn't really really doing it either. Do you trust Hori to give you the um, D-pad that you so desire? I don't think I've ever purchased anything from them. So Uh, I don't know. My fight stick is a a Hori fight, uh, fight stick, and it's great. Um, but you know, it's a big joystick and costs a lot of money. <laughs> uh, at the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards this past Saturday, Super Mario Odyssey had a special segment where two teams of gymnasts ran around a recreation of New Donk City trying to grab moons. It was very silly. Was it like Legends of the Hidden Temple, the very final part where they're running through the temple? Like, were there palace guards that jumped out? And they there were no, palace there were no palace guards. Okay. Uh, it was. More like there was a jungle gym that was... An urban jungle gym, yes. Yes, 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 exactly. I don't know. It was r- dumb. It was real dumb. But I like that Nintendo is doing this sort of marketing thing because I feel like they didn't do this for a long time, and it's the sort of thing I would have totally... Oh, yeah, I would have loved as a loved kid. Loved as a kid. So I like seeing them do this sort of more aggressive outreach. I also think that Nintendo is probably not catching on with kids like it did when we were little, um, just because there are so many other ways to play. And Nintendo went through that kind of like weird period for, uh, you know, since the time when like the Wii was uh, in in its boom mode. Um, Kids that are like five or six or seven right now, you know, are only starting to see a world where Nintendo is successful. And you know, unless their parents were like way into it, like I don't know how they're getting that information now, um, like where they're getting their Zelda hype from. So, yeah, like go to the Kids Choice Awards, do Labo. Um, you know, it's, let's have have some kids excited about Nintendo. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey was nominated for favorite video game, but lost to Just Dance 2018 because obviously. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. It's just, I mean, that it came out, Just Dance 2018, 2018 is big enough that it came out on Wii. Wii, Mark, not Wii U. If anything, I think it's, you know, we all laugh at, oh, I can't believe there is another Just Dance game, that that is still going. But it is obviously enormously popular. Gotta be, yeah. 
Monday, mm. Nintendo surprised released a free ebooks prequel to Detective Pikachu, the 3DS game. Uh, Detective Pikachu has the written by credit. So it's, it's, it's like the Detective Pikachu wrote the book. Is it like a, uh, it's like a short read, like 20 minutes. Did you read it? Uh, I downloaded it. It's, again, it is free. Is it like a noir? Is uh, that how it's written? N- not really. The, the, like the a Detective- Philip Marlowe story? <laughs> yeah. The Detective Pikachu is sort of uh, knowingly not as tough as he should be to be like a hard world detective. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a mystery involving an, an Eevee, and it's got some cute drawings at the beginning of it, and then just like becomes a book for a couple pages, and then it's over. Friend of the show, Anthony, mm-hmm. uh, told me that he bought it and was playing it and that he thought it was really cute and a lot of fun. Very similar to Phoenix Wright, apparently. I am seriously considering picking up this game. We don't have a topic for next week's show just yet. I'm just saying. Maybe it's Detective Pikachu. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's it, because we already talked about bad dudes not coming out. So, Oh, that's right. That was going to be the last item on, on the, uh, the news here, is yeah. that bad, bad dudes, I was going to say bad news. Bad Dudes News didn't come out last week. What? Oh, I actually do have a finally. Yes. Uh, a while back, Arc System Works, who they're the developer behind fighting games like Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue, Blaze Blue. It's probably Blaze Blue. It's Blaze Blue. Like, yeah. Uh, they held a poll asking fans what game they'd like to see President Minor- Minoru Kaduka play at Evo 2018 in August, and they chose Super Smash Brothers Melee. So uh, he will be playing. Uh, Super Smash Brothers. And Patrick will, of course, be there. I will, of course, be there. I saw, actually, a uh, a link that Evo put out today uh, looking for submissions for judges for the games. I don't really know what a judge does at these competitions, because it's, like it's not like a commentator, or I don't know. But I'm thinking about, like, maybe I should apply for that. Sure, why not? I have no <laughs> idea what the qualifications are, but... I mean, there's a whole list of things that I have to do, but I, I don't. I I feel like I can, I'm pretty judgy. Yeah, I know fighting games, a couple of them. I think that'd be awesome. I recently picked up uh, Mortal Kombat XL, which is the like special edition of Mortal Kombat X. Oh, from... I hate that. That's what it's called. I'm okay with it. It's very Mortal Kombat-y. I played it for maybe half an hour and was. It's so violent. I've become so squeamish in my. It's old age. <laughs> Me too. I really have. Here's the thing. Like, I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm not even doing fatalities. I'm just like doing moves. And then it like zooms in on uh, someone's skull as I like smash their bottom jaw through their brain. And I'm like, I don't know that I need this. <laughs> All right, let's get out of the news. That is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. If you want to hear us talk about something a little less violent, we're going to be discussing Kirby Star Allies next week. There will be no Jaws being pushed up. And by next week, we of course mean Thursday. That's right. It is not all next week. It is two days from now. Um, But in the meantime, if you would please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We're only a bunch of reviews away from having 50. So We're about halfway there. We're about halfway. Um, And you can close that gap for us. Uh, Steal someone's phone and write a review for us. Give the phone back because you're a good person. If you want to follow us on Twitter, I am at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And collectively, we are at NinCart Society. The Facebook page is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. If you like Mark and Mind's opinions, we do write about comic books on retconpunch.com. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying, Just Dance. Thanks for listening. I mean, the question is, is having tea cool? Right. So I think men having feelings is going to come up.